Departing Solane for a time, we find ourselves in the heart of the industrious city of Rodal, a city beholden to the new gods of progress after the gods of old had all died off. Rodal is a city of metal and steam, backbreaking work, and pollution pumped through the sewers and sky. It is here where our heroes Lesia, Cordelia, Zero, Corvilius, and Ace are drawn to the tavern known as the Warped Tankard by strange dreams of a glowing woman who spoke of their destinies being bound to others of their kind. While there, they spy a strange baby who seems to have some kind of calming effect on the patrons. While getting to know each other, Cordelia overhears a pair of half-orcs speaking in their common tongue, one she should not understand, to fetch the Inquisitor and guards. Sensing something was wrong, she told the others, but before they could act, the Inquisitor entered with his forces and demanded the baby be handed over to his custody. Does anyone have baking soda? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm assuming you're still naked, by the way. I would at least have my rapier on me just because I'm not stupid. Oh, no, I, I assume it's with you. I'm just guessing you're not wearing armor. Oh yeah, no, I'm definitely not wearing armor right now. Yep. So they all kind of look at you for a second, but then the guards just turn back their attention on Trini and start moving. Is, the patrons get out of their way. I start stumbling into them. Yeah, we're gonna go intervene, I think. Alright, well then, I, if you're I going to... I very drunkenly stumble into them, like... Alright, so they basically, you drunkenly stumble into the way of one of the guards, and he just takes his arm and tries to check you, like, push you out of the way. I go to dodge and hit him. All right, so I'm going to make this oppose athletics versus acrobatics because you're ducking out of the push. He's trying to, like, just shove you off to the side. Yep. Right, so his athletics would be a natural one. All right, so he goes to shove you, and you duck, and he, like, swings wild, so he's wide open. You have advantage on this attack. Uh, you know what I got? A natural 20. No. Not one. Two natural, natural ones? ones? Yeah! I kid you not, two natural ones on both dice. He goes to push, you duck down, and you go to strike, and you trip, and you fall flat on your face in the middle of all four of them. And they just kind of look at you like, all right. Aww. And initiative is rolled, because they just start drawing their swords. Yeah. This, yeah. this was yeah. going to be capture the woman. It is now draw your swords. Okay, Bring so, it. well, I mean, he's the only one involved with them right now. But if you plan yes. on getting involved, you still okay. roll initiative. Okay, I'm just, I'm just pointing that out here. Hey, Brian. Uh, on he your initiative account, you don't have to do anything. 12. All 13. Right. All right, I got a six. 21. 16. <laughs> Sir? So, I said so 16. Okay. Which one of you has the higher deck, Sarah or Andrew? Oh, uh, uh I have a rogue, yeah. I have a plus four, so I'm gonna assume me. Yep. Right. Just checking. <laughs> so we have zero with a twenty-one. Ta 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 ta. Uh, and uh, mm, mm, Cor Corvelius. What's your dexterity? Fourteen. Roll off with me, please. Excellent. I have a nine on the die. I got a 17 on the die. Alright, so it'll be you first. But first we're going to have... Now, am I correct that nope. Cordelia's sis twin sister is currently about to be beaten up? Yes. <laughs> twin yes, she is. <laughs> Good of you to notice, sir. Uh, we're going to have to have a talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> so... Zero, you just fell on your face in front of these four guys who all draw so short swords and are surrounding you. What would you like to do? I drunkenly get up. And say oops. Oh, that was a trip and a half. Uh, okay. <laughs> Is that all you do with your turn? I go to... Are they surrounding me? Yeah, with their swords drawn. Uh, I will take the dodge action. 
Alrighty. You're like, I'm about to get my ass kicked. Put my hands up and take a dodge. I was like, oh, that was a tripping ass. <laughs> Alright. They all attack you. At disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. I know how this works. Yeah. Bring it. Like, fucked up. <laughs> Guys, I'm fucked. <laughs> Alright, so. Just wait for the two natural 20s. That's 11. That'd be fucking hilarious. 11, 11 to no. hit? <laughs> no. Alright. That is a nat uh, natural 20, but I also got a 10. So, 13 to hit. No. No, that one's gonna miss too. And that one's gonna miss. Apparently, these guards are incompetent. They sent them to collect a baby. They, I they don't did. think they sent the highest quality guys. Yeah. I'm just drunkly moving out the way. Oh. Yeah, you're just like swaying, like, whoop, nope, whoosh shit. And the Inquisitor is behind them, like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Ace, you are up. All right, so... What is this? What what is the scene before me with the rapier at my side in my quote unquote boxers? <laughs> so four guards were moving on Trini, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the intent to restrain. The Inquisitor was pointing at her because you didn't hear the baby part. You were outside. Mm -hmm. You walked in at that point, and then the monk made an attack against one of the guards, failed horribly, got up, and then was like, whoa. But and you then, don't know it's the monk because they look like. The, what's her name? Only his hair is. Yeah, only different. my hair changed. <laughs> oh, it was he just did, your hair? It was yeah. just his hair. It wasn't yeah. The whole oh. <laughs> he just styled it to look like mine. I wasn't around for any. I'm gonna of lean this. into that. Yeah. So. The the air genasi is moving like drunkenly and l like avoiding every strike. And the Inquisitor behind them is just like, are you kidding? Seriously? This is what's happening here? Um. Huh. I'm... What am I going to do? Because... I, <laughs> I'm going to turn I, around I, and walk back outside. <laughs> yeah, because I already dealt with the guards today as it is. And I, I have no interaction with anyone <laughs> here. So I... I say, yeah, we haven't bought in yet. Yeah, you haven't, like, h hooked me yet. You had to wander off. I, I'm not. Well, do I do I think they're after the adults? Like they were going after Trini when you walked in. They were moving at, towards her. At the very least, she has the baby on her back. Talking's a free action, right? Yes, it is. I say very loudly. No, you're not taking the baby. What are you stupid? Hmm. Her voice just rattles the walls. Uh, God damn it. Uh, fuck. And I draw my rapier. This is gonna suck. You all owe me a big favor after this. And I basically... Oh. I stand in between um, the baby and the guard. <laughs> Naked and ready to defend. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Yeah. I'm just You're like, welcome, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for forcing them to progress the plot. Basically, I yeah. So I'm standing in between uh, the mother, the baby, and the guards. As soon as they get it in with like one of them gets in five feet of me, I'm fucking swinging. Alrighty. So that is Ace. Bless ya. So I'm going to. Um... Presumably I have my sword with me, although I wouldn't probably have my shield because I was just at work at the docks. Um, so were they, did the guards, did they trip all over themselves and fall? No, they were swinging at um, Zero, but he kept like weaving out of the way of their blades. And the guy, the Inquisitor at the door... It's just kind of looking at them in disbelief, like, I, I was supposed to get competent people to help. How how close are they to me? Uh, they're probably within 15 feet. I'd like to throw a bar stool at them. All right. <laughs> so you grab a bar um, stool and you huck it. That is a strength-based attack. Good. I, I, yeah. Oh, hmm, it's the fighter, yeah. You're not proficient with stool, but... Uh... I'm I mean, not Andrew is. Yeah, I was about to say. I, I was about Obviously to say. Obviously he's not, since he he's, can't get it out of his armor. He's proficient in it. 
So, <laughs> is this just an athletics track or just a straight uh, it's strength It's a d20 check? plus your strength modifier. Oh, yeah, no. That's a six. <laughs> <laughs> Total or plus something? Total. <laughs> <laughs> so you just fling a bar stool across the across the bar, and it smashes uh, into the wall next to the uh, next to the Inquisitor. Good. Does he poop himself in fear? <laughs> no, he just it smashes in front of him, and he just turns that same "what the fuck" expression goes from his Good. guards to you guys. Like what? Really? Does it at least distract the guards a little bit? Say yes. Little, like one kind of like what? Uh, whatever. God damn it. All right, fine. <laughs> you rolled a six. What do you want? Crevilius. Yo, speaking of bar, speaking of the bartender, what's Horus doing? Uh, he's not getting involved because this is the guard and the Inquisitor. Okay, but I just threw his stool. Oh, yeah, that's a, <laughs> yeah, that's he, a good point. He's, he's more scared of them than what you're doing. Oh. He's, that's a good point. This is the guard and the Inquisitor. What do I know about them? They suck. They disappear people. I, don't like I that. might not want to have anything to do with this, actually. I'm no, not the baby that invested in this guy. <laughs> Help the baby! <laughs> I'm going to pull out a slingshot from my bag. I'm just going to shoot a rock at them. So you pull back on the slingshot and you fire. Roll to hit. That is a 13. You break a window, <laughs> and that Inquisitor is still Fuck. like, do I even have to do anything? <laughs> and you know, we'll say Cordelia delayed her turn, like, what the fuck is just going like, on? Yeah, just like... And we'll like, put you right back in the proper initiative what? order next round. So, yeah. Cordelia, what are you up to? Um, since I was coming to a area of the city that I don't normally, I brought my mace, so I'll draw that. And I'll look at the Inquisitor. On what grounds are you coming for this child? Are you readying in action in response? Yeah. Alright, what are you readying? I'm gonna ready to hit a guard. <laughs> hey, it's good if he If he and his guards don't back down is the trigger. Back the fuck down. Which they won't, but... So the Inquisitor turns to you and says, On orders of the king. And he pulls a tube out of his, like a metal tube out of his cloak and points it... Who would he point Wilda? at? The one who asked the question. I would assume so, yes. And he points it right at you, Cordelia. And I need you to make a deck save for me. That would be a non-natural 20. Alright, so you're only going to take half damage. So that's six points of piercing reduced to three. There's a sound of an explosion that fills the whole bar, rattles the windows just like your voice did, and you just see Cordelia duck, but not in time, as something smacks into the side of her shoulder, and you just see a spray of blood behind her. Alright, so we're doing this. Can I take a swing at the guard with my mace? Or is the Inquisitor closer to me? The Inquisitor's still in the doorway, so he's actually the furthest away. But I would have to get past the guards to get to him. Yep. So I'll take a swing at a guard. Right, so you just step in and swing that mace. 21. You hit. How is the librarian doing better than the rest of you? She's basically Evie from the mummy. <laughs> Excuse ah. me. I would argue that there's nothing incongruous about this. That was four points of damage. Four points of damage. As you soundly whack him from behind. And <laughs> there's a sudden quiet in the bar. As everyone just realizes what happened. I hit a guard. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I've hit a guard. Well, I'm fired. <laughs> Please tell me the entire <sighs> bar erupts into a giant, like, brawl. No. No, they yes. actually shrink back. Oh. From these goons? Yeah, there is fear. Whatever. Uh, Zero, you are up. Hey, what's that? What's that two thing you got there? Okay, well I'm gonna use the uh, leaping frame. The leaping frame. It lets me just uh, it gives my. It adds ten feet to my um, punches, basically. My unarmed strikes. Right. So how far is the Inquisitor from me? He is probably only about ten feet. So yeah, I have fifteen feet of reach because it adds ten feet to it. All right, roll to hit. 
15. That'll hit. All right. Flavor. Can't really see, but my... You can't really see it because I actually am wearing a hoodie. But my body turns a faint red as I extend, as I throw a punch and you see extend and hit the uh, Inquisitor. Yep. So flames ripple out from your hand and smack into the Inquisitor. Roll your damage, sir. Yeah, I'm normally sir. pale blue, Roll now I'm a faint damage, red. Sir. When you say extend, you don't mean like... You're not like he does it, Mr. Fantastic Punch. Thank like you. Fire wraps around his hand and it goes out like a fiery fist that ah, smashes into him. Yeah. Thank you. D4, uh, two plus three. Five points. Five points of damage. All right. Yep. So you hit him. And I guess I use this on as well. I'll use Flurger Blows. So do two more. All right. It's all against the Inquisitor. Yep. All right. Roll to hit. Uh, 11 plus, so 16. That'll hit. And 18 plus. That'll hit. So first one is max of 7, and the second one is another 5. So that's another 12 on top of what I did. So that brings him to that particular number of hit points that I'm not going to say out loud. Ha ha ha. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, uh. So you swing in flames ripple from one hand you cross around and the thing is you have a guard right in front of you you're throwing your punch it, he went to move out of the way didn't realize you weren't aiming for him so the flames whoosh past his head and you do this on either side of his head both sides huh. and, and he just kind of looks at you baffled and the inquisitor and I... slams back a couple steps looks at you and goes it's another one kill that one I don't know what you mean. Um, and uh, I turned pale blue back. I turned back pale blue. All right. Yeah, he ordered them to kill you. So that's what they're going to try to do. Yeah. I and they're not at disadvantage this time. Yeah. That is a 17 plus numbers. 17, yeah. That is a 17 plus numbers. Yeah. That is a 16 total. That will hit. I have a 16 AC. And that is a 17 plus numbers. Ooh, I'm taking damage. Alright, so that is six points. Followed by three points. So it's a total of nine. Mm -hmm. Followed by another six, so it's a total of 15. Okay. Followed by a total of oh, another two, so that's 17 total. Okay. So you are just hit, hit, hit. And then when the last one hits, you kind of jerk back. And just you feel your skin get grow hot. You turn red again, and you just throw your hands out, and a gout of flame just smashes into the one that hit you. Oh, I didn't do that. Uh, <laughs> what is your what is your charisma modifier? Plus one. All right. Uh, roll me two d10. I didn't do that. <laughs> I rolled a nineteen total. Um. Yeah. So. You just throw your hands up, almost like you try to protect yourself, as a just gout of flame ripples out of your body and just shears this guy. He's screaming, his skin is melting, and he falls to the ground. Whoa! It was the one you just attacked, Cordelia. So he drops in front of you. <laughs> and jaw just drops. Whoa! I am also surprised. I'm like, I didn't do that. Huh. So, JJ, uh... you have the ability to use Hellish Rebuke. Interesting. Mm hmm. That was a little stronger than a rebuke, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, how many times can I do that? You have the ability to use hellish rebuke. Okay, then. <laughs> I was like, you just have the ability. Oh, well, then okay. <laughs> so basically, any turn you can use that as a reaction. Uh, Damn. Yeah. He's going to die tonight. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> this and that's, you. <laughs> that was the guard's <laughs> turns. Ace. I'm just surprised. So I'm like, uh. While everyone's distracted and everything, I'm going to disengage. Use. All right. How? F you were never engaged. You, you put yourself between them. They. They still had, like, 15 feet of movement to get to her, uh, so you kind of stood in front, and you're, you're clear. You don't have to disengage. Well, no. It, how far away is the Inquisitor? Uh, he's about 
30 feet from you? I feel I'm going to have to literally go through the guards, I think. Oh, so you're going to disengage first to, so they don't get op attacks. That's, yeah, that's what I'm doing as a bonus action. Movement, which is 30 feet. <laughs> then I'm going to try to attack the Inquisitor so I can either make him drop the, uh, whatever the fuck that was. Or, yes, drop... Oh, he had that tube. Yeah, the tube. Oh, the dildo. Yeah. I'm going to make him drop the I'm dildo, sorry. and... Is this podcast child friendly? It's not. No, no. never okay. was. The we use the word fuck a lot. You were saying. So I still have my attack. So I'm go- I'm literally going to uh, attack him, but I'm going to try and do non-lethal with the flat of my blade. You're using a rapier. There is no flat. Okay. Thought I try. Stab him. I mean, you can hit him with the pommel if you'd like to do that. But I would like to point out that you basically just have a giant whippy sword. All right, so I guess I'm going to stab him because as of right now, to me, he is the most dangerous one here. All right, so you run up to him and you go to s- stab him? I, Non-lethally? Uh, so <laughs> I'm just, you know what, fine. I'm going to... Be- it's a light stabbing. <laughs> I, I didn't touch anything vital. Yeah, because I, I, I may want to question him on what the fuck all this is about, because I don't like not knowing things. This naked man runs up past everyone who's very distracted by Zero, and literally just like, voo, right there. Hey, slash. <laughs> all right, roll to hit. All right, don't fuck me. Don't fuck me. I'm assuming he's a mage, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping... What do you mean, mage? There's no magic. Oh, actually, fair. Then I'm... Whatever... Hold on. Where the f... So, how does a... 12 do you? Right on the nose. Oh, thank God. This would have been so anticlimactic if it missed. Yeah, so... That plus... Sneak attack! Because I am one-on-one with him. There is no one near him, right? Correct. Okay. You are swashbuckling, mm-hmm. young man. I am naked swashbuckling. <laughs> so what you're saying is you went at him with two piercing weapons. Exactly. Is that a? Are you referring to his penis? I am. Okay. Fourteen <laughs> points. Actually, ho- all right. I- you drop his ass. Oh, ac- actually, it was way more, but okay, that works. <laughs> you still drop his ass. He had eight hit points left. Oh, okay. So you slide this blade into the side of him, trying to avoid anything <sighs> vital. Uh, vital and as you do his face like kind of gets this shock like he doesn't look like he's a man who understands pain very well Mm. well maybe dishing it out but not taking it yeah and he just kind of his eyes kind of roll back as you pull out the blade and he slumps to the ground and i basically i just want to duff him out guys can i can i basically do a free action it's basically just a cool pose with like as soon as i pull it i kind of swipe my blade to get basically get the blood to just fly off Roll a performance. All right. One, Matt. One. I was just Matt, thinking one. it too. <laughs> it throws the blade. It throws the, the blade window. across the bar. Sticks out the, the window. Ceiling. Just out the window. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry, but that's a. Oh, that's a twenty-one. Uh, twenty-one. <laughs> so you flip the blade, and the blood comes off coolly. You're standing there naked in a doorway. And you see a oh. bunch of guards standing there looking at you having just stabbed an Inquisitor. Oh, no, I know. I'm, I'm... Come to this bar more often. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you Reaction see a bunch speak? more guards. Reacting to speak? Uh, I just wanted to wait, knock them out. Wait, Shit. wait, out the door? <laughs> out the door. <laughs> How many Shit. more? Just a couple, but they just both kind of see you stab an Inquisitor. That's the end of your turn. <laughs> yes, it is. Fuck. It was nice knowing you guys. <laughs> Bless ya. <laughs> Actually, no, I haven't even known you guys. I, I have no idea who the fuck you guys are. <laughs> it was nice speaking to you guys away. that one time I threatened you. That's a bit overkill there, that's, mate. That's, that's not true. We helped him out with his, uh, his what's it? <laughs> that's right. You did tell him how to wash his clothing. Yeah. Yeah. And I might be running butt-ass naked for the rest of this game. So, paint, paint me a scene. So we've got a dead Inquisitor. Uh, he's not we- dead. He passed out from the pain. He did say non-lethal death. Mm. We have a dead guard. 
There is a definitely a dead guard. His corpse is crispy and laying on the ground, unmoving. Can I see the other guards that are on their way in, or...? Uh, they're not currently on their way in. They were a ways off. They were in the street, like normal street guards. We have three but other the fact that friends. he just dropped the guy in a so doorway. He, he summoned the guards, is what he I'm did, He didn't summon them. They're on patrol. Yeah, no. He did something in their line of sight, so... Yeah. Their, their investigation AI has kicked Uh, in. Brian, yeah. out of curiosity, do I recognize any of these guards? Uh, no. No, you do not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, I should also let you know, Brian, I am bloodied. <laughs> well, I just hit you with four structure attacks. I would hope so. Yeah. Um, so what are the other guards, the three other guards mm. in here doing? Are, did, uh, like, do they look like they're like, oh, shit, our, our dude is down, or are they still like... Or are they like, oh my god, the fires of blah, 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 or are they They were like... given one command, it was kill that guy. They look a little unsettled, but Good. Their, their job is to kill that guy. Good. Whilst they look unsettled, I will s- hit them with stuff. Um, right. With what stuff? What's within arm's reach? Well, I want to keep doing bar fighting because it's fun. Please tell me I'm not within arm's reach. No, I would never throw a gnome indoors. You throw a halfling. <laughs> the game is halfling toss. <laughs> she said indoors. That's the best part. Make, makes them hard. They're less aerodynamic than halflings. What's uh? What's in easy reach? What's on the bar? I know there's no lemons. Bottles. There are tankards. I wish there were lemons. I would squeeze lemon juice in their eyes. That would be so cool. I would squeeze lemon juice in their eyes so hard. Yeah, well, then they'd be blinded, and then other people can hit them. You can just throw beer in their eyes. No, that's helpless. That 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 helps nobody. That's, that's a waste. waste. Of beer. <laughs> what are the what are the tankards made out of? Metal. Heck yeah! I'm gonna clonk one on the head with the tankard real hard. Alrighty. Are you gonna throw it at him, or are you going mm. to walk up and smash him in the face with the tankard? <laughs> Break his nose. Yeah, let's 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 try and break someone's nose so they're distracted. Alrighty. Is this just sure this, this is isn't a, athletics? Uh, you sure this is, it's not this is athletics? Strength. This is strength. I think you have a very strange definition of athletics, but okay. <laughs> athletics is when you're trying to do something like climb or jump or or swim. Something athletic. Well, I mean stabbing something. is Smashing is athletic, right? <laughs> Stabbing is athletic. Uh, 17? 17 will hit, but hang on a minute. Because rather than the 1d4... Good, because I don't have any d4s. What is your wisdom modifier? Plus one. Wow, so that is a DC 11. Good to know. By the way, uh, your hellish rebuke, JJ, DC yeah. 11. Okay. And their wisdom is a flat zero. So, fail and pass. But the fun thing is, the one behind him was the one who passed. So that doesn't help him all that much. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give him a strength save, which he passes as well. So you go to smash him with this metal cup. Yep. And all you hear is this exploding gong just... Clang! And the one gets flown backwards, and the both of them yes. stagger back as you yes. cast Thunder Wave. Thunder you have the ability wave. to cast Thunder Wave. Cool. Who's in the firing yes. zone, Brian? The inqu- Oh, shit, you! <laughs> that doesn't hit me, right? The Thunder Wave? No, I, I angled it so it wouldn't hit you. Hold on. I angled it. God damn it. I had your character angle it in a way Thank because you. you didn't know you were doing it. Right, right, right. Until you learn that you have these abilities, I'm going to be very uh, forgiving. Have I learned this? You now realize you can do this. Okay, cool. So for your benefit and for mine, Thunder Wave, a wave of thunderous force sweeps out from you. Each creature in a 15-foot cube originating from you must make a constant... Oh, it's constitution, not... Well, it's your wisdom... But it's their constitution. Okay. That does not change the pass or fail ratio. Um, What's the save, Brian? 
11 constitution. Okay. On a failed save, a creature takes 2d8 thunder damage and is pushed 10 feet away from you. On a successful save, a creature takes half as much damage and is not pushed. Right. So, what, was the, what was the damage again? 2d8 thunder. 2d8 thunder. All right. Thunder. I am... Welcome to Thunderdome, bitch. I take half. All righty. Sorry about your pants there. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Here's my favorite part. Oh no. The unconscious guy can't make a save. Oh no. Oopsies. Oh fuck. So he automatically fails. He automatically fails. And oh. his limp little body just goes flying out the door. <laughs> Ass over tea kettle. <laughs> Ragdoll out physics. Street. Out in the street. It's like watching a body from uh, Half Life 2 go flying out uh, through a window or something. And that's the Inquisitor. Oh god. Right. Yes. Can I do an action just because he uh, left my uh, range? Are you going to stab him? <laughs> I thought we wanted this one alive. I kind of want to take the... the oh, the, the, the tube is on the ground. He dropped it. Oh, okay. Then I don't care about the body. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't care about his corpse then. <laughs> so how much damage did you do there, Sarah? Eight plus... What? That one's cocked. Eight! Whoa! Okay, so you till kill two guards. Whoopsies! <laughs> Wait. Just boom! And they go, both go flying backwards into the door. So How you many see, are left? One. One. How much damage <laughs> total? You take eight. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> uh, as that happens, you watch the body go flying. You're like, huh, that's weird. You turn as two bodies come flying at you and you duck and they splat onto the door. <laughs> Brian, how are my boxers doing? Uh, they're now soiled. <laughs> I brown noted him. <laughs> I I was kind uh, of expecting them to just fly off, but you know what? That works uh, too. Well, if it was a loincloth, would it have flown up like Marilyn Monroe style? Oh, it definitely Marilyn Monroe, but uh, that just oh. gave you a lovely view of the uh, the soiling. <laughs> Ow! It doesn't have to be poop. It could just be pee. I'm gonna say urine. I'm gonna say urine. You probably urinated a little. That was terrifying. Yeah, no. I, I don't know what's going on. In a world without magic, someone just exploded two guards. That's true. Yeah. With yeah. sound. Bitch! By the way, this explosion was massive. Like, the sound of it was massive. Cool. Uh... Everyone's ears are ringing. Oh, everyone. You Tinnitus all day long. Cordelia, you go. I just saw a woman explode, and there's been. I, I'm just I, gonna look at the other guard, and I guess. Sorry about this. Take a swing with the mace. Alrighty. I I have a quick question. Alrighty. Where where did Trini go during all of this? She's behind us. She's behind you guys by the she back door. She didn't run out or anything. She's too scared. I mean, there's a lot of shit going on. And. Also, this all takes place over, like, it's been, like, 12, 12 yeah, seconds. That's seconds. true. That's true. Uh, that is a 19 to hit, though. That will hit the, the gentleman with the uh, ringing ears. Having strength is weird. Um, only two points of damage, though. How? Oh, you only have a plus one strength? Um, yes. <laughs> okay. Because I was about to say, you, you get to add that to Oh, your... no. I have a... I have a... 11 strength total so it's a it's a plus zero but i only have a d6 for my mace. Ah, so you do not have strength all right so that works yeah, two points of damage <laughs> i'm sorry about this Boop. <laughs> it's the whole i just oh. he he burnt this one to a crisp and then that one got stabbed and then there was an explosion and Oh, I did like my job. It was a I good did. job. I mean, if we kill you, maybe I can go back to it. No one will know it was me. Corvelius. Okay. Well, I... There's only one guard left, right? Only one guard. I'll use my slingshot at them. Alrighty. So you pull back the slingshot. Cutting fire! And actually hit something this time. There we go. 21 to hit. That will hit. Seven points of damage. Doing a lot more than the mace, this tiny little nugget from the slingshot just whacks into this guy. 
him in the nards. Hits him in the nards and he bends over. <laughs> the Inquisitor has to make a death save. Oh boy. Because someone triggered <laughs> from, the... Uh, from outside. Yeah. Someone triggered the death saves by blowing him up. Excuse me, princess. I didn't know I did that. <laughs> hey, I don't care he about you point. guys keeping taking him alive or letting him die. He's an asshole. He is. He is. I just want. I just want to duff him out. That is now zero. You have, you have a guy on you, who's being beaten up by a girl. Oh, that's my that turn. That doesn't mean anything. I'm saying there's a girl there beating him up. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Uh huh. <laughs> Oh, man. It's an accurate description. He's being beaten up by a girl. I'm not doing too hot. <sighs> I just have this big old smile on my face and I just go to punch him. Alright. <laughs> I'm not doing so hot. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's just really funny. It gave me help. <laughs> I use, I have flaming fist and then I was have help from you. Did I glow? Oh, yeah, so I went Did I glow? Did I turn faint red again when that happened? or? You did. Okay. Does a 14 hit? A 14 will miss. Then... Uh, nah, that's it for me. Don't you have your bonus action? You can punch him again. Oh, wait, is that the straight bonus action? Uh, that'd be a 17. That'll hit. Pull your damage. That will be max damage of 7. Alright, so you whiff, and then you come up with an uppercut and just crack! You hear his neck snap. Well, I don't want to snap Whoa! his neck. Then you Do hear it. his neck crack. Alright. Alright. Just wanna knock him out. That was, was an attempt to kill. I mean that one so, guy. That one guy <laughs> <laughs> He is down. That guy goes down. And Ace, you see those guards outside. I They look at you. They look at you. It's their turn. <laughs> oh, it's their turn, damn it. It's their turn. You're the only one who can see this though. Yeah. It's their turn. They turn and they run and you just hear whistles being blown. <laughs> we should get out of here. Okay, so... Well, let me know when it's my turn. Oh no, th now we're out of initiative because they're running for it. Oh, that sounds like a time to leave. I turn the sign that says close, no longer open, shut the door, lock the door, <laughs> <laughs> and then I... <laughs> Alright, you're all my hostages! <laughs> no... <laughs> Nobody move! Or the baby gets it! We're here in downtown Rodal, where a crazed naked man has taken an entire tavern of dwarves hostage. I go to the barkeep. <laughs> and one gnome. <laughs> no one cares go, about the gnome. I go to the barkeep and, uh... I, 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 I literally, one, grab the thing that shot fire. The tube. The tube. And two, I run it. Oh. So, uh, Zero walks up to the bar and orders a drink. The bartender just kind of looks at you dumbly. I still uh, have I still have a smile on my face the entire time. There's a, that's not making him any more at ease. Uh, Brian? No, well, I want to get my armor. <laughs> all right. Well, he slides the pitcher to you. Like he's like, serve yourself. I'm not touching this. <laughs> did did I hear? Um, did we hear the whistles? You can hear the whistles. Yeah. Also, uh, Ace came now. in, just closed the door, locked it. Can okay. And is is donning his armor as quickly as he can. Doesn't that take like a minute? It does. It it does. Can I ask Trini why they would be after her child? Uh, as soon as you walk over to Trini, you see that she's a lot calmer than she should be. And she looks confused, <laughs> but calm. And as you walk over, you feel a wash of calm go over you as well. It's that baby. What? It's the Xanax baby! <laughs> the Xanax baby! <laughs> <laughs> so she's holding Corson and looking at him, very confused. But she has this calm expression on her face, and she just kind of looks at you as you approach. And you feel that calm just rush into you as well. Well, I'm glad... I mean, the guards aren't alright, neither is the Inquisitor, but I'm glad that you're both alright. Um, why... We gotta go, people! Guards! <laughs> yeah, I'm like staring at the mug, because as of so far, everything sound related that's happened to me has been while I was holding this mug so I'm taking this mug with me <laughs> yeah the bartender's Be not fighting any of you on any of the things you're taking from his bar he just watched you roast a guy there is no magic in this well, world no well yeah, that's I don't care about like whatever I'm gonna 
fine. I, no, I, I, I'm just I saying flip that a, no one I flip is him a silver for the mug. But like, okay. but like, I'm taking this mug because in my mind, like, I am not a magic user. I'm a doofy fighter. So I'm like, holy crap, this mug has insane sound powers. And the mug's this coming mug with is me. This mug magic. <laughs> yeah. Also, oh, we God. should get the this hell again. out of here. Uh, uh, Trini. Uh, yeah, we should go, like, now. We should, but I think Trini should come you go to back door? with us. Yep, the that let's has, go. <laughs> there's that door that has the washroom sign over it that just led outside. It's in the back. Ace is literally looking at everyone as he's putting stuff on with the door open, being like, either you're coming with me or you're being left behind. Let's go. And nope, let's go. Sorry about the mess, Horace. I'm basically, I guess, pushing out also the mother and baby as well. Just like I'm following let's go. him. Trini, let's go. I love how Cordelia is like, will you come with us? And then Ace is like, you're coming with us. Just drags her. Uh, <laughs> I mean, right. that that works, I suppose. I mean, we're already murderers. We might as well be kidnappers as well. Uh, Brian, what's, what, what's around her. when I walk out of the wash? Right? Uh, I think that's what we just did. So there are a few options for your escape. Well, if she fights us, okay. if she fights us to not come with us, like, we're not swinging it's, her over our shoulder. Here's the I thing, she's... though. Once she's calm, I'm calm. Okay. Let's go. A a Ace, as soon as you go over towards her, you calm down. We should go, guys. We should go. Yes. Sarah, are you not going with them? Are you just still in the bar? I was just at the bar having a drink. Flame Fingers, if you want to be the last person here with the charred corpse on the ground when the guards show up, that's on you. If you're coming, we're going. Also, you have to pay our tab. <laughs> uh, that one ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all the character motivation JJ needed. Come on, guys, let's go. Yeah, yeah, let's go. I'll leave the barkeep a gold and tell him. Uh, Keep the change. Yeah, I'll no, be... he looks at the gold, like, in amazement. And he has I'm been drinking like... all day. <laughs> it's true, but most people don't pay him in gold. Most people pay him uh, in copper. Good yeah, I leave him a gold and be like, uh, till next time, dear dwarf. And I, st I stumble Is my way out of, out of the back door. <laughs> I'm, I guess I stroll out with... Yeah. Yeah, you were in a rush, and suddenly you just, nah, this is fine. Fine. Yeah. No, I'm just I mean, stumbling out behind them. Just because no. you're not panicking doesn't mean you don't. No, no, no. Still no have like this is fine. I, I can, like, I can focus. Kind oh, of. This is fine. Yeah, not like this. this is fine, man. Yeah, no, this is fine. I got this. This is like, yeah. all right, I'm good. We're not like Bri being rash with our decisions. As we it's, leave, I, as yeah. we leave out the door, I wave, uh, I wave to the tavern and I'd be like, don't forget to tip. <laughs> Take your atrius. Oh wait, we took her. <laughs> The first thing I do when I walk out, I am literally like, where is the closest, I guess, sewer? Because, or place to hide. Do you say there that? is actually a Why? sewer. I am not going Why? in the sewer. Why would we go in the sewer? Uh, With a child. So let, let me, let me paint you a word picture. I just wanted you to know, I stumbled out the bar bloody still. It's like, oh, yeah, like, oh this is Someone throw good. a bandaid on him. I'm just smiling still though. Do, do you say that out loud? Someone throw a bandaid on him? Yeah, do you say that out loud? Sure, yeah. Uh, roll 1d4 and add 1. Okay. Uh, Are you serious? Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> hold on. She has healing word. She does have healing word. <laughs> oh, cool. The, the fucking fighter has healing word. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of red. <laughs> A creature you can see within range that can hear the, your words regains hit points equal to 1d4 plus your uh, divinity score modifier, which is your wisdom... I believe it's your wisdom modifier. Cool. Uh, I knew it was plus one. Yeah, so uh, I rolled a three, so four. Okay, so you get, regain four hit points. I am no longer like bloody. Do I notice him stop <laughs> You bleeding? say throw a bandit on him and you just see his wound starting to close up when you say that. Oh, this mug is magic! <laughs> she thinks it's the mug and it's the best thing ever. <laughs> well, <laughs> She's gonna have a sword in one hand, magic mug in the other! <laughs> With that, yeah, I zip yeah, up my Yeah, I, I was my gesturing. And I put my hood on. Alright. It's not a zipper, because there's no such thing as zippers. Oh, there's no zippers yeah. here? Okay. I didn't no, know. No, you, bu you button up your, uh, 
Oh, buttons? Uh, buttons work too. Uh, buttons yeah, you, up. you button yourself up and you kind of put the hood back up. Uh, Brian, so... Ugh. So let me paint you a word picture of what you see as you exit the back of this bar. I'm <laughs> working on zipper technology. <laughs> um, you do see that there are a couple drains and that lead into a sewer. To your right, you see a like a bunch of very tightly packed together buildings that create these narrow alleys that kind of wind towards the dock area. And to the left, you see the factory where the iron uh, is smelted into steel. Brian, from my personal experience, I know the sewers are the best way to lose guards, most likely, right? That is how you feel, yes. Okay, so I'm, I go for the sewer first, and I go to, like, pop it open. Alright, make an athletics check. S- 16. Okay, well, I'm gonna grab him I by the- I was gonna say, we could just go to the- through the alleys to the docks. I was gonna say, I grab him by the back of the collar. I'm like, you're not taking a baby into a shithole. Uh, that would actually be an athletics from you as well, Sarah, if you're going to okay. try to grab him. Okay, yeah. Oh, now I get to make my athletics rolls. Yeah, you're trying to grab him. Uh, I rolled a 15 and I add 5, so 20. All right, so you go to like go to that sewer grate, you just feel her grab the back of your armor. Now that you're wearing clothing, she has something to grab and pull you back. I do not know this woman, so the first thing I do is get out. So that's uh, acrobatics, I guess? Acrobatics to get out of her grip, yep. Okay, so... That is cocked. Oh, that that's a crit. Wait. All right. So you grab him and pull him back, and he just worms his way out of your grip. I okay. I draw my rapier. Whoa, 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 whoa! Cool it. I don't know you people. I don't know. We know you very well. We just saw all of your bits. <laughs> <laughs> he kind so... he kind of sighs a bit and just goes. Either way, the best way out of this area is underground. Could we find an alternative to the sewer? We do have a baby with us. We could yeah, also you do hear the whistles beginning to blow coming well, from the other side of the tavern. Sorry, what were the what were the three directions? The sewer, the smith area, right? Okay, the sewer drains in front of you. Alleys are to the right that lead you towards the waterfront, and to the left there is a factory. Now, through you're starting to hear whistling coming from through the other side of the tavern and down the alleyway areas. The other direction sounds good to me. All right, so factory? Yeah. Factory. So let's, let's go. Go to the factory. Lots of things to hide behind, probably a lot of steam to get lost in. I uh, know, I'm saying, say, didn't he didn't they only see did the guards only see Ace's face? That's true. The ones that are running? Couldn't we just do you want to do you want to stay with us where there's a bunch of people with weapons and fire hands or do you want to go back and get your armor all covered in shit again shit armor versus the guards and the inquisitor i i think i'll take my chances with the sewer I... why not just put your hoods up and why not just put your hood up and join me in the crowd i put my hand on ace's shoulder um I feel like we were brought here for a reason, and we ended up in this mess together. Perhaps we should stay together for now. Please. The moment I see a guard, I'm gone. That's fair. Okay, let's go. Because I will not die for people I do not know. No one's asking. Didn't ask you to die for us. Yeah, let's really. just go. I also, I also look at all you. If I go with you, each one of you owe me a favor. All right. Uh, I don't know about all that now. No, I mean, what are you I don't about? mind owing you a favor if you come with us. Aren't you the one who's wanted <laughs> for murder? This is true, but I can leave. I can leave <laughs> at any time. Remember that. I'm guilty of being a bad shot with a slingshot. Ace, if you want to leave, by all means. I'm just trying to help you out. Letting in the crowd would probably be our best choice. They seen your face, so you have to keep your head low. But you are through the soil is eventually going to catch on. Brian, what part of uh, the city am I? From? I was actually about to say all of you guys are trying to come up with reasoning, and that whistling sound is starting to get a little further off, kind of echoey. And you turn and look, and you see pink and purple mist starting to swirl around you, and it just envelops all of you, including Trini and the baby. 
And then all of you just see rippling outlines around Ace, beasts. His body melds and shifts into a powerful tiger, a bear, a shark, a rat, a wolf, just constantly cycling through these as the dark woods starts to encroach around him. Around Lesia, she's vibrating, her body just reverberating, and a lovely melody rolling out, shifting and changing constantly around her. Around Zero, confusion, flickering images, one moment, one thing, one moment next, a distortion of color, sound, it's impossible to peg down, it's abstract in your own thinking, where it hurts just to look at him. And you see Cordelia, just a ripple of pages. She is surrounded by books that are orbiting around her, her eyes glowing white, a third one opening in her forehead. Wow. And around Corvilius, machines that don't exist, shouldn't exist, flying machines, ones moving rapidly around him, things that are allowing him to to fly, to turn invisible, to flicker, just possibility, constantly. And then you all turn to see Corsa. He's no longer a baby. He has grown, a handsome young man with a kind face. And as he walks towards you all, you feel a ripple of happiness, calmness, and then a bond of family. And you just hear the voice of the woman from your dreams. As a single thread, you are weak, but woven into a cord, you are unbreakable. And then the mist vanishes and you all return to the world. As you left it, the whistle's blowing and danger setting in closely. Is Trini there? Trini is there. She wasn't there in the mist. Okay. It was just Corson. I'm just going to start moving and if you follow, you follow. Yeah, let's let's go. So we head to the factory. Mm-hmm. I I am dashed into the factory because at this point, just, I care about the baby, but I ain't getting caught. So no, of course is not. Is there is there a crowd nearby? Not a crowd. The factory's let out for the day. No one's really working there. There are still machines working. There are still people moving things around, but it's like the skeleton crew just to keep everything hot and mobile. You don't want to let the, the the steel cool completely and have to remelt it from its... I move in a way that doesn't make me look suspicious. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so the entry to the factory is surrounded by a large yard, allowing for storage of scrap and completed steel beams. So you are coming up and you enter this fenced area, and there are just piles of garbage metal scrap and organized bound metal beams and then the the factory itself is further back and there is a smaller door to allow for workers to come and go and a larger door it looks like uh, carts can fit through do we hear pursuit have the whistle the whistles are back the whistles are still in the background they're not like on your tail this very second but okay but they're they're gonna start looking soon okay all right, let's keep going. Okay. I literally moved to the next building then, I guess. All right, well, it's one giant building. You're either going through the building here or you're going around the entire factory. But around the factory will take you through the alleys. Uh, through the building. I'm going to stick close to uh, Trini and Corson. All right, so you're kind of leading them through. You get a couple odd looks, like... They're, they're used to odd people coming through here, you know, it's mostly dwarves, but you do see humans and other races doing regular grunt work. The dwarves are stronger, so they tend to be doing a lot of the lifting and carrying, and smelting is kind of the thing they know well. But you're getting more odd looks at the fact that you're bringing a baby through here. They're not saying anything, it's just you do get those looks. You get the feeling you might be a little conspicuous. About how far I away am I from everyone? You're probably about... 50 feet ahead of people because you can move really quick okay all right so i'm about 10 feet behind them then because i'm not i'm not rushing i'm gonna point out stuff and like 
make up stuff like, oh, and this over here is the the bean maker. Like, make it look like I'm giving a tour, basically. Roll deception. Yeah, we'll see about that. Uh. Yeah, no. <laughs> What'd you get? I rolled a four. All right, so Cravelia's one, you know she's full of crap. Two, you know everybody around you knows she's full of crap. <sighs> but you also know that no one around you guys cares. Good. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Let's just go. They don't give a shit. I'm still a little tipsy. Let's go. It shows. <laughs> as soon as you say, I'm still a little tipsy, they all go, uh, and get back to work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I wave at them, Brian, do the finger bang stuff at towards them. Like, I'm just casually walking through. <laughs> just casually walking through, fellas. Don't mind me. <laughs> yeah. Covered in blood. <laughs> Covered in blood. I was going to say, they're right next to a bar, like... Yeah, they're, they're right next to a bar, so they're kind of used to drunks. It's just like, why do they have a baby? Oh, uh, they're drunk. Should we take the baby? What are we going to do with a baby? Good point. All right, let's go. <laughs> moving through. Yeah, we keep, right. we keep moving. <laughs> Quickly with purpose. So you move into the building. You go in through the main door or the cart door? I'm going to say I go to the cart door to see, like, yeah. where it goes. All right, it goes into a very large open area. There are vats of molten steel and cooling oh. tanks of water that take up the majority of the space. There are also conveyor belts moving scrap, steel, and carts around, as well as a few workers monitoring the area. There is a catwalk and scaffolding that circles the main outer ring of the building, and a small room at the top farmost corner on the right-hand side from where you are. Does it seem like in... Uh, Anywhere in there, there's some sort of exit. Yeah, there's probably an exit on the other side. This is not a main entrance. This is probably the one that will take the metal down to the dock. Okay, then I'm going to literally wave them down, point, I'm going this way, you make your decision, and then I start moving. I mean, it makes the most sense to follow him. All right. I'm going that way, but not because he told me to. <laughs> You're just being obstinate for obstinate's we're, sake. We're, we're allowed to walk through this, right? Yeah, sure, let's go. I mean, no one's stopping you, All right. but no one here really has authority either. Fair enough. No one cares. Well, and as you say that, you though. hear a pair of guards coming around the part of the scaffolding. Do they? Would they be able to see me? They don't seem to have noticed you yet. Would you like to roll a stealth? When you said they're on the catwalk? They're on the catwalk above you, yes. Would you like to roll stealth? Oh, or yes. Or are you going to do something loud? No, I want to do stealth. I'd like to roll stealth. Stealth, right. please. 14. 24. 11. 2. I got a natural 1. Oh. And now I would like all of you to add 10 to that number, as coming from Ace, almost like a black mist begins to curl out and wrap around you bending shadow and bending light away and you stumble and fall but almost like the sound cushions Cordelia as if sound? The, the sound is cushioned as if it doesn't exist and you get a little uncomfortable here Lesia because you feel the pressure in on the sound mm. but they pass over you without seeming to notice I, I literally stop dead in my tracks Ace, you have the ability to cast Pass Without a Trace. Nice! I look at the mug. <laughs> <laughs> you take sound away as well? <laughs> Such a fantastical device. I saw the, the essence come from Ace, right? Yes, you did. I'm... I don't... I'm very confused, and I'm just standing there. Like, I, I literally have not moved. I'm gently put, I gently put my hand on your shoulder. I don't know what you did, but thank you. Brian, you weren't joking about me picking the, <laughs> picking a monk. <laughs> my dear, I'm not even sure what I did, and I don't... I, 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 I don't know. And my hand's shaking a little out of just fear, confusion, and, like... Kind of, thank God. <laughs> hey, hey. Let's use this. Let's go. Yeah. 
Um, let's, you wanted to get out of yeah, here. Let's, let's, let's get out of here. Let's go. Yeah, okay. I'm going. Right. I'm going to like. I'm not running as fast as I was before, but literally, I'm like, kind of just leading, just because I don't quite trust these people. But at this point, I'm just like, something's very off, and these people are also off. So I'm like, I guess I'll s stick with them for a bit. The shadows follow you. And it's almost as though the people around you, the ones who are with you, know everything that's going on. But the other people here are working, the guards who are working, they don't notice anything. You can walk right past them and they don't even notice you. And you get to the opposite door and slip right out into the city streets. The sound of whistles still in the air, but much further than they were before. Where do we go from here? Thank you for joining us for this special edition of the Reliably Chaotic Podcast. Rebirth is an original Dungeons & Dragons adventure written by Brian Scharf, using the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rules set published by Wizards of the Coast and the God's Fall worldbook created by Aram Vartian of the God's Fall Podcast. You can find Aram on Twitter at Vartian, V-A-R-T-I-A-N, or by going to godsfall.com. My name is Brian Scharf, and I've been your DM. You can reach me at ReliableDM on Twitter. My name is Nicole Summers, and I played Cordelia Patience Gun. This is Jair, also known as JJ, and I played a character of Zero. Hey, this is Sarah, and I played Lesia. Hmm? Oh, oh, uh, this is Matthew Reed, and I play Corvillis Picklewhip. Hello, my name is Andrew Brown, and I play Ace. The theme for this episode, Beyond the Known, was composed by Varansky and made available by Neosounds.com. All other music by Kevin McLeod on the Incompetech website and Adrian Von Ziegler. Detailed information on music in this episode is provided in its description. Music for this episode was selected by Nicole Summers, and the episode was edited by Matthew Reed. Contact us on Twitter at Reliably Chaotic, email us at reliablychaotic at gmail.com, or join our Discord server by following the link in the episode description below. If you like us and want to support our show, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash reliablychaotic, or by leaving a 5-star rating and review on iTunes. Thank you for listening, and we hope to see you again in our next adventure.